Good morning. And it is a good morning. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are here. My name's Tom. In case you don't know me, I uh, heard a story. I heard a story not too long ago about heaven. And later today, I'm going to be talking about heaven. So I thought I'd pass the story on to you. It seems that a couple ladies died, but they went to heaven. St. Peter <laughs> greeted them. Don't be shaking your head already. St. <laughs> Peter greets them, showing them around, you know, and they're just enjoying everything. And so he, uh, he finally finishes, wraps up his little greeting to them. And he says, and, and finally, the last thing, don't, don't step on the duck. But whatever you do. My final advice to you, don't step on the ducks. So the ladies are like, okay, well, that seems weird, but St. Peter takes off, and they're just walking around, enjoying everything, and just, you know, look over, you know, one of them's like, look way over there, and, and then quack squish, stepped right on a duck. Just like that, St. Peter shows up, handcuffs this not pleasant to look at man to her. I mean, okay, he was ugly, just terrible. And she's like, oh, well, the other lady's like, I'm certainly not going to step on a duck, you know, but they're walking around still enjoying heaven. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, a little bit later, all of a sudden St. Peter shows up and just handcuffs this gorgeous man to the other lady. She's like, wow, what, what did I do? And, and the, the guy that's handcuffed to her says, well, I don't know, but the last thing I remember was I stepped on a duck. <laughs> she was not. <laughs> Boo. Andrew didn't even get it the first time I told it. <laughs> we are. It's terrible. it's terrible. Somebody else, somebody else told me that. That's not my, it's not my story. Well, we want to continue in our look at what li uh, the promise series. So what does it look like for us to house the Holy Spirit? The, it, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. So what we've been doing is going through Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and we will go through 14. So we're at the tail end. If you want to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to start at verse 8 in a moment. So what have we been learning? We've been learning that there's, uh, there's a way to go through this life more than just deductively or more than um, just our intellect. There's a spiritual side, an intuitive side that we are learning, we are learning how, what the voice of the Holy Spirit looks, sounds like, and we are learning how it is th that we can that we can walk in that. So, so we've been learning that we come to church, we gather in in this building, you know, on Sunday morning, or we gather midweek in life groups. And, and, we, and we expect something special to happen because there's more than two of us together. And when, and when we get together, something special is going to happen. That, and we're, we're learning how not that when we, we come expecting something special to happen, that we don't just come as, as uh, spectators. We don't just come as spectators, although, you know, most of us, didn't lead worship. Most of us aren't preaching. So you're, in one sense of the word, we're spectating. But we, we come expecting to minister to other, to other people. The Holy Spirit's actually going to flow through us to other people. So we've been learning that it's not about getting the gifts of the Spirit and just getting as many gifts of the Spirit as we can and just holding on to them. And be inward focused. What happens, uh, you know, when we do that with information, knowledge, or the gifts of the Spirit, we just hold on to them. We try to get as many as we can. Then pride begins, and it's just, it's just terrible. But we're learning. We're going to be outward focused. Uh, yester or yesterday, last week, I ended with 
that the love of God flows into us and as it, then as we give it away and give it away and give that love away and love and love and love, he just keeps pouring more into us. We don't, we don't run out of love, so we want to be otherly minded as we, as we come together. This, should, this is a safe place. Church is a safe place for us to come in and, and be trained in such a way to walk in the Spirit and in one sense of the word practice. Practice the gifts that God has given us in a safe place, but, but still with the mindset, the other six and th- <laughs> five-eighths days of the week, we, we out there, we're walking in the Spirit and we're blessing other people and, and we're, we're letting the, the Holy Spirit flow through us. That's what we've been talking about. So 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 8. It says, love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part, will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, But the greatest of these is love. Holy Spirit, we invite you to reveal to us the the word, the rhema word this morning that we are to receive from this message and and take out of here and help us love God and love people better. I ask this in Jesus' name. And if you agree, say amen. Amen. Okay. I want to... I noticed something about this last, last week as I was studying that I've never noticed before, and maybe you already, maybe you already know, noticed this, and, and it's not new to you. Maybe even this is Paul's main point in this passage of Scripture. What I mean to say, normally I go through this, this passage of Scripture that I just read, and when I walk away, I'm like, okay, it comes down to three, uh, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest one is love. That's what I walk away from from this passage of Scripture. But I wonder, as as I'm studying, I wonder if Paul reminds us that another age of Earth's history will follow this one. I don't think I've ever read that portion of Scripture before and had that thought that Paul may have, maybe his main point was to remind us that the the age that we're living in now is going to change into an... Let me show you what I'm talking about with the timeline. If we go back to creation and then we're looking, of course, at Israel because we're in church and we're talking about the Bible, but in the Bible, you know, we could... The next after creation, we can talk about history and then they got the law and the prophets. And then that leads us up to the crucifixion and the resurrection And then started the age that we live in now. It's called the age of grace or the church age. Sometimes it's talked about in history. That's what we're living in right now. And then the Bible talks about there's going to be the seven-year period called the tribulation. How many of you guys are pre-tribulation rapture? Would say, yeah, I'm pre-trib. Let's... Okay, how many of you are mid-trib? Uh, I think we'll be around here for a little while of the... But how many of you are post-trib? We're going to have to st- stick it out all the way through, okay? And then the rest of you are pan, pan-trib. It's just going to all pan out. <laughs> I figured... <laughs> you know, there were a lot of you that didn't raise your hand. Maybe I should preach on what tribulation actually means and what rapture actually means but it's a seven year period and talking about the tribulation another thought comes comes to my mind in revelation 13 it talks about the mark of the beast now don't hear what i'm not saying 
I am not saying that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. That is not what I'm saying. But if you would ask me two years ago um, that in America they were going to say, if you don't talk, take the mark of the of the you know, if you don't take this mark on your forehand or your forehead, then you can't buy or sell. I would have said, that's not going to happen in America. You know, we're going to have to be taken out for that to happen here. And then, you know, in the last week or so, we had our governor. You know, there's certain states in America that are saying, if you don't get the vaccination, the, that, then, then you, you're going to lose your job if you work for the state. And I know that's just on a state level, it's not on a federal level, but there are... It, I, I, don't get caught, <laughs> like I said, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not, I'm not we've, got, we've got people I love that have taken the vaccination, people that I love that say, no, I'm not. You, I've got all over, you know, so I guess my, what I'm saying Let's not get caught up in the minutia. I want us to rise above. Let's, let's get up here, see the big picture. We're living in the church age. The tribulation's coming. If you're a Christian, hey, tell everybody you know about Jesus. Somehow get that conversation going towards Jesus. Make sure they know that Jesus loves them, that Jesus died on the cross for them. He rose again on the third day to prove he's got power over sin and death. And, it, and if all they have to do is just turn their heart to Jesus, what they have to do is trust in Jesus. Christians that, you know, online or in-house, that's what we should be doing, is telling people about Jesus. And if you're a non-Christian in-house or watching online, man, you need, to, you need to place your trust in Jesus. Get off the fence, stop observing, and take the plunge and say yes to Jesus. It's, it's as simple as saying, Lord Jesus... Forgive me of my sins. I trust you. I'm putting my trust in you for all of eternity. So that's, that's where we're at. When I think of the tribulation, I'm, I'm thinking we're closer than we've ever been. And it seems like we're getting there faster. Okay, then after the tribulation, there's, it's called the millennium or some... Uh, sometimes called the messianic age it's a thousand years where we rule and reign with Jesus on the earth and then after that thousand years then that's there will be eternity which that's what most of us think of when we think of of heaven so we should think of where we find ourselves right now we should think of this at this age that we live in this is not a bunker down, fill your garage up with food, get a whole bunch of water. Now, that might, that's a good idea. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. But this, this age, we are training in this age for the next age. We're going to, wherever we're at in this age, we're going to take a big leap moving into the next age, Christians. But it's going to be built on what we're, what we're, have already been learning so let's let's be trained now I learned something else last week and I love to learn as a matter of fact I'm a lifelong learner and what I learned that the verse first part of verse 8 that I read to you love never fails well the Greek word that is translated to us failed is pipto or pip two, one of those two and it actually means fall. So it could be translated, but it, it, most of the time it's translated love never fails. But it could be translated no, love never falls. Look it up. Go to Blue Letter Bible if you don't trust me. But it, but it says love never falls. And I'm, I know this wasn't a mistake by Paul. He was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he used the right word that he was supposed to use. But sometimes we think of love never fails. You know, I don't know what that conjures up in your mind. But maybe that phrase means that love never falls from its position of prominence. And, and to me, 
To me, that means something different than, than when I read that before. So Paul is explaining to us that the quality of the type of love that we, that we were studying about last week, love is patient, love is kind, those characteristics of love, it, as we learn to l- live As we learn to live and to share that kind of love with people, we become more like Jesus. And this quality of of heart, this, this quality that is love in our heart, gives the Heavenly Father the greatest amount of joy when He's watching it formed inside of us and when He watches us actually use it and show love to other people. And Paul explains that it is a quality that can be formed in us and becomes part of us in this age and in the age to come. Let me show you what I mean by that. In verse 8, Paul says, he tells us that this grace, gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, speaking in tongues, and words of knowledge, that they, they're going to cease in the millennium. So we just, we just looked at that at that timeline, the, those grace gifts or those gifts of the Spirit are going to cease in that thousand-year millennial reign because we will uh, we'll be communicating, speaking directly to to God, face to face, and then and will and we'll have our resurrected, immortal bodies. We'll have we won't have this fleshly mind that we have to hinder. The, the communication that, the, that we receive from God. Verse 9 says that now we know in part, and Paul is telling us this, that this state that we currently find ourselves in. Yes, if you, if you prayed that prayer that I was talking to a moment ago, and you say, Jesus, I put my trust in you, what happens is your spirit is regenerated, or your spirit is made alive, or your spirit is perfect, but you still have a fleshly body, you still have a fleshly mind, and, and so we, although we're saved, we're, uh, there's an incompleteness or a limited spiritual capacity that we have. But in the millennial age, there will be no, no barrier between the resurrected children of God and God and the difference between the way we are in this age right now and the way we will be when we get into the millennium uh, Paul is saying in verse 11 that's the difference between when you were a child and when you were an adult so I got to watch four grandkids for 28 hours in a row <laughs> last last uh, when was it Thursday and Friday not that I was counting. But, so I got to hang out with, with four, five-year-olds, 11, 12-year-olds. I got to hang out with them and see how they thought. And, and, and then, you know, and here I am, you know, I'm rocking 40 years, 45, 45? Okay, 60. So I've got all this life experience that I have. I see the world totally different. I see the world so much closer to reality than those kids do. And so in the same way, when Paul says, when I was a child, you know, I spoke and I thought like a child. He's saying that when we get into the millennium, we are going to have such a, a better understanding. Guys, think about it. We'll be free from the restrictions uh, the the distractions of a fleshly mind and a fleshly body, what, uh, a rebellious body, will be free from the wo- the wounds that we're carrying around in our soul right now. We'll be free from the sorrow of uh, you know our past regrets. We'll be free from the crippling memories of the things that have happened to us, or we'll be free from the shame. Uh, the things that we've been to, uh, we've done to other people, and you might be sitting back and saying, "Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. I I hear from God just fine." Well, good for you. <laughs> but uh, wherever you are, it will be better. 
Okay, and the illustration that he uses, he's like, for now we see in a mirror dimly. And we're, you know, if you're thinking, I'm thinking, man, I see well in the mirror that I have. But the mirrors, you know, so it loses some in the illustration over the last 2,000 years or so. The mirrors that they used back there, imagine opening a can of soup and then just really cleaning off that tin you know, and then look, at, that's the type of mirror that they would be using at this time in history or something close to that. And so that's the difference that in our understanding when we, as we move into the, in the millennium. So the question should be, what qualities does God want us to work into our character now? Because they will go with us into the next age. And and Paul tells us exactly what it is that are going to go into the next age with us, into the millennium. The, the, you know, those gifts of the Spirit that he listed, prophecy, speaking in tongues, words of knowledge, that they will, they will cease. But, but the, the qualities that God wants us to work on and to work into our character, those are faith, hope, and love. Now think, I want to... Think about that. I, I understand how it is that love will move forward into the future with us. But in the millennium, would we, would we still need faith and hope? Because it, one of the verses, 11, I think it was, said that we see God face to face. No, not 11. So verse 12 says, we'll see God face to face. Now, if we're seeing God face to face, why would we need faith? Are you, are you tracking with me? And in the same way, if we already have our immortal bodies and, an, and a correct mind, correct thinking, I mean, if, and we're ruling and reigning, wouldn't it be awesome to rule and reign with Jesus and be able to see him face to face? I mean, we're, we're working with Jesus right now and building his kingdom. Well, we're supposed to be. I think we are. But, but then, would we really need hope? Because it seems like it... And the answer is yes. In this millennial reign... See Isaiah 65, 20, there's still going to be people and there's still going to be animals that are aging and even, and even dying. And plus, the devil, although he'll be bound for the, the thousand years, he's, he's still there. And so, yes, there will be a need for faith and hope in the millennial age, but when we move into eternity, that's when there won't be any need for faith and hope, and the, and the greatest of these is love. Love will continue into eternity as we enter into the, to the city that will be lit by the glory of God and the glory of the Lamb, by, by Jesus, in that garden-like city we had we talked about the garden-like city in a few series back that city and just wanted to let you know in the city world there, there'll be no punishment if you step on ducks that was story cannot be cannot be fact-checked on that story <clears throat> excuse me so no need for faith and hope then in eternity because all the promises will have have arrived at that point all the promises have arrived so one question that we can uh, the one quality then that we can carry with us to eternity and that is love so the big idea for this message today if somebody asks you what you learned in church the more we love the more we become like Jesus and the more we become like Jesus the more we approach God's predestined plan for us. See Romans 8, 29. That's his plan all along that we become like Jesus, that we, that we love like Jesus. 
So that means everything that we do should be filtered through the grid of what would love do. Or really, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Because, because we're being developed into the image of Jesus. But what would love do? And this is a big deal because the Holy Spirit's not just equipping us for this present age. Not just equipping us for the age of grace that we're living in now. He's equipping us for the... Well, I'm pre-trib, but he's equipping us for possibly some of the tribulation. All of it, if you're Bob. And then, <laughs> and then he's equipping us for the millennium. And then he's equipping us for eternity. So the Holy Spirit has come to teach us to love like Jesus loves because that kind of love will never fall. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you. I thank you for love. I thank you that you loved us so much that you came to this earth and you died on the cross for us. Lord, I don't know if you're coming back today or 10 years from now or more. But I pray but I pray that you would give us an urgency, a sense of urgency, a sense of Focus that we would see the importance of what's going on right now. And we would know that the important thing is, is that we love you and that we love people. So, Lord, I, I pray that you would pour, continue to pour your love into us and that we would continue to give it away. Help us not to be selfish, but help us to to know your heart. Help us to be like you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We, this is the fifth Sunday of the month, and I warned you last week, we're going to receive an offering for O Sunny Day, the orphanage that we sponsor in, in Africa. And usually we, we receive an offering on five Sunday months. We, we pass the hat around again, and we... we also, we receive a food offering when the team goes to O Sunny Day, and the the team, um, because of the lockdown in Uganda, they didn't go. the The children's VBS team didn't go in July, um, but we we want to send them some food money to help them fill that storehouse up. And so I'm just kind of rambling, so you can get your money ready. <laughs> but for those of you that are not boomers, <laughs> you can get on your phone, hopefully at some point today, and, and help support our family on Boosie Island in Lake Victoria outside of, not Kampala, in Tebe. <laughs> so let me pray. Lord Jesus, I... We, you have not called us to save the whole world. That's your job. But you have called us to reach out to our family, reach out to our friends, reach out to the people we go to school with or the people we work with. And you have placed O Sunny Day in our sphere of influence. And now it's time for us to share some of the financial blessings that you have given us with them. And, Lord, I pray that, that we will continue to be a generous church. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amina. Everybody say Amina. That's what they say for amen at O Sunny Day. Amina. Well, thank you guys for your generosity. They, they will appreciate that. And that will help fill their storehouse up with food. Stand with me, please. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. He'll lift up the light of the, his countenance upon you and give you shalom, shalom. There should be people up front here this morning that want to pray for you. Is that you, Jeff, or is that Rebecca? That's you. So Jeff's going to be up here. He wants to pray for you. He wants to prophesy over you. And so come on up.
and, uh, and be blessed. If you need prayer for anything, come on up. If not, you're dismissed. Go grab a free drink. <laughs>